Hey guys and gals, today I'll be talking about the movie Lord of Illusions, the Scream Factory Blu-ray release. And I think this is probably like a f second time reviewing it. I think this the second video block I officially did was showcasing the Blu-ray. The first time I did this, and that's before I became, with this time, we become blogs. I was thinking it was a DVD movie, but for around the time I reviewed Lord of Illusions long ago. But this version is the director's cut version I reviewed. It also comes with a theatrical cut too. And a lot of great special features. Just Google it or go to Blu-ray.com and you'll you know about the special features play by play. Besides that, man, I, I always loved Lord of Illusions. It was one of my favorite Clive Barker's movie. One of my favorite horror movies. You know, especially the style. I think I probably probably know about like maybe two or three movies that did like the detective film noir style the supernatural horror theme to it very rare we see something like this you know but um i, I like i like this movie man I, I like the characters i like the story um i like the death scenes with the blood and gore scene and how, the, how they set it up in this movie and the directors could have showed a little bit more you know that kind of like wow it kind of fills in the gap that i think how the theatrical cut did not you know even though i did enjoy the theater, theatrical version but the director could explain a little bit more better um, let me, um, just talk about the movie a little bit, not too much, you know, without giving anything away. Um, the movie begins with this cult leader, he kidnaps a girl, and it's, it's kind of weird, I can't say, where he fucking got the baboon monkey from? You know, you see at the beginning of the, in the prelogue, you know, you see, I think prelogue is before the aftermath. Uh, well, anyway, you see the beginning story with the cult leader, right? And I can say, he got a baboon monkey, I, I just want to know where... Where did you get a baboon monkey? Seriously. Um, besides that, these guys, I think these guys are from the same town, went to the leader to rescue the girl and stop him. I don't know if he was going to murder the girl or not. We don't know. But it's pretty much the cult leader has a like it to one of the heroes in the movie at the beginning part of it, I mean, that's going to rescue the girl. And once he rescued the girl, you know, th I mean, they, they killed the cult leader and then that's when he rescued the girl. And then you have the aftermath, which is set in New York, with this detective played by Scott Bakula. And he has a little history on his own about this de demonic possession case that he, he, that he stopped. And it kind of affected him, you know. Um, I think one of, the, one of his bosses, I think the boss that came to visit him, hired him just to do a, a to, to do a, like a mystery or go to like, I think he was probably going, probably going on vacation. Yeah, like, like a, yeah, investigation, excuse me, to, um, to Miami, Florida, to, Ma to Miami, I think, or Florida, or something like that, to do, a, to do an investigation on this guy, that he stumbled upon this other guy being murdered, and then he ended up becoming a case that he that he was kind of curious about, and then the woman saw him in a newspaper on, on one of the murdered friends of, of the magician guy, who was the hero in the beginning part of this movie, who saved the girl, and she wanted to hire the detective, to investigate on her husband, make sure, like, he's safe or whatever, you know. But later on, she invited Scott Bakula's character to his magic show. The illusionist was dead from one of his own tricks. And the investigator decided to investigate this and help the woman out pretty much. Um, as the movie progressed, you know, you get this, you get, you get like the serial killer in between this movie who's killing these people and... You already know who the serial killer is. He was like one of the cult followers from the beginning part of this movie, who kind of grew up 13, 13 years later, you know. And um, it's pretty much, it, it's like what the movie's telling you is like pretty much, I think I be, I, he's gonna rescue his 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 master pretty much, the cult leader, and also invite other cult members to come back. What what they first, what they trying to start back then, um yeah well, I don't want to ruin too much but you know. It becomes the horror elements as it as it progress forward, especially towards the ending, towards the final scene segments. You'll see the horror elements and so on. Um, I don't know. I, I like this movie. I always did. I never doubted it. I know there's haters for it. You know, there's people that like it, but I, I know there's a lot of hate comments and ho hate reviews for this movie. You know, not not all of them, but I I know I was surprised to know some of it. You know, I was like, why hate on this movie? This movie was good, man. You know. I was surprised there was never a sequel on the detective. I like to see, because uh, when I saw the sh liner notes, he, he I think he did two short stories on this character. So I'm, su I'm surprised he didn't do a part two. 
I won't mind seeing Scott back to play the same character again. Maybe investigate another supernatural case. You know, that would be hot, you know. Anyway, peace, guys. See you later.